Welcome back to Silent Hill 4, The Room. We have progressed past the building world, gone down the staircase, and... Well, it looks like there isn't a door at the bottom of the staircase now. Normally there is, so maybe there's no more worlds. Maybe this is it. I don't know. Also, I'm not sure whether there's normally a blood trail that leads into the hole. So that makes me think there might be something back at my apartment. So, let's go and see what's going on at home. Also, I need stuff anyway, because I have very little on me. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm going to skip that little waking up animation. Okay, no screaming. You know, you know what freaked me the fuck out right now is if there were bloody footprints leading from the bed to the door. Right? Like they came through the hole and then... <laughs> we okay? Okay, well we're cursed again, but that's pretty normal. We got a note. Walter Sullivan's not sitting on our couch, just chilling. Okay. Our house is relatively safe. Number one, ten heart. Number two, ten. Number three, ten hearts. Number four, ten hearts, Steve Garl. Number five, ten... What is this? Ten hearts. So we know that... Um, Something that's different between the original ten victims and some of the later ones, from what we heard, is that the original ones, which these seem to be, had their hearts um, removed from their chest cavity, and then they were sewn back up. So this is saying something about the hearts. I, I guess it's like partially unreadable. Is that why it's like some of them are cut off? And I think Billy Locaine, Miriam Locaine, I vaguely recognize those as the victims' names, so they're obviously one through ten victims. Um... Yeah, here we go. We got the whole hearts thing up until 11, starting with 11. Assumption, Walter Sullivan. Yes, I was so I was right. I was 100% right that they did kill themselves. They made themselves one of the victims. But because they had ascended the flesh or something, they came back slash were still on the other side or something. I don't know how it works. So this is what each person was killed for, right? One is killed for the Ritual of Assumption, Void, uh, this one's to represent Void, Darkness, Gloom, Despair, Joseph Schreiber. Number 16 should be Temptation, right? Because that was Cynthia. Yep, number 16, Temptation. Jasper, aka Chocolate Milk Person, was Source. Watchfulness. Oh, Watchfulness, Andrew DeSalvo. That makes sense that that would be attached to them because they were a... Uh, like one of the, they were one of the watchers, the people that worked in the very center of the water prison world, and they looked through the little peepholes and just watched people. Richard Braintree was chaos, that makes sense. And... Well, I guess this isn't a list of things that they've completed, because these last two are not completed. Number 20 was supposed to be Mother, Eileen Galvin, Mother of Rebirth, I think it was called. And then the 21st was supposed to be the giver or receiver of wisdom, I forgot which. Henry Townsend, me. I gotta make sure they just don't complete this list. One of us needs to survive and I think we'll be fine. By we, I mean the person left alive and also the world for not being invaded by a demon. So I'm out of healing items, right? I think that was the case after the last boss fight room. Yeah. I have no healing items. Thankfully, I have a lot of ammo. 44 rounds of that. I feel like I'm just moving into a boss arena. Maybe I'm not. 
But I feel like the next thing is going to be maybe the end of the game. So, going with that assumption, I'm just going to dump the pistol and I'm just going to take all of my revolver rounds. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess that's it. Yep, let's continue down. I think at the end of this is my front door. I just caught a glimpse of it. That's a baby. It's at 302. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Is it going to open? The door's never opened. It's a diary. I had that weird dream today. The one with the man with the long hair and coat. He was crying and looking for his mother again. I saw that man with the coat ten years ago at this apartment. He was going up the stairs, carrying a heavy tool, an old-looking bowl, and a bag that was dripping blood. Hmm. I never saw him again after that, but a few days later the neighbors complained that they heard strange noises coming from the supposedly empty room 302. So I took a look around room 302 and found signs that someone had been in there, but nothing odd other than that. But that's when it all started. I still hear strange noises coming from the window of room 302. Sunderland. What a weird wasteland I'm in. There's just nothing out there. Other than... Well, I mean... To be technical, in front of me is a cage full of mannequin heads. But after that, just darkness. I'm wondering if I should go back for that doll. Remember the doll that Walter Sullivan gave me a long time ago? I think they mentioned something about Eileen in relation to it. Let me actually go grab that real fast. Wait. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I really don't like this. There's something wrong. The doll isn't here anymore. Right? It's not in weapons. No, it's definitely not there. It's definitely not there. And it's definitely not in my inventory. Uh... Huh. Okay. Here we go. God, it opens. Those are the protective candles. Record player, no TV. I think this might be the room from the past, when the, the journalist was here. Excuse me? Yeah, it's all gray. But some things have color, like these things. There's an old picture book and a red book here. There once was a baby and a mother who were connected by a magical cord. But one day the cord was cut and the mother went to sleep. The baby was left all alone. Wait, this is the same thing we read at the very, very, very beginning of the game. Remember when we first were in our apartment and it was all like the other Silent Hill world where everything was rusted and just impossibly dirty and messed up? We read this. 
except it was like i think half bloody and kind of hard to read but we read a part of it at least but the baby made lots of friends at wish house and everyone was very nice to him the baby was happy i think that's where it ended in the other world so it continues now his friends told him how to wake up his mother so the baby went right away to go and wake her up but the mother wouldn't wake up no matter how he tried she wouldn't wake up because the one that he was trying to wake up was actually the devil the baby had been deceived poor baby the baby cried and cried and cried when he thought of the mother he remembered the feeling of being connected to her through the magical cord just then a ray of light came down from the sky the light was very warm and made the baby feel good when the baby looked into his hand he saw that the magical cord was lying there with the cord clutched in his hand the baby went happily to sleep so what i gather from that is that i do need to go to Sunderland's apartment and get the cord. The one that stinks now. Crimson Tome. She who is called the Holy Mother. Be not holy one whit. The descent of the Holy Mother is not but the descent of the devil. Those that be called the 21 sacraments be not sacramental one whit. The 21 sacraments be not but the 21 heresies. To give birth to a realm of wickedness within the blessed realm of our Lord be blasphemy and the work of the devil. If thou would stop the descent of the devil, you must bury part of the conjurer's mother's flesh within the conjurer's true body. Okay, let's stop there for a second. This is telling us what to do with the umbilical cord. So obviously the conjurer's mother's flesh is the umbilical cord. It has to be buried within the conjurer's true body. I guess we'll find out how to do that later. Thou must also pierce the conjurer's flesh with the eight spears, avoid darkness, gloom, despair, temptation, source, watchfulness, and chaos. Do so, and the conjurer's unholy flesh will become that which once it was by the grace of our Lord. The eight spears. Well, I haven't seen those yet. Those are basically just two guidebooks on how to fight the last boss. <laughs> I love the design in here, that everything is just black and white except the stuff that you can interact with, I guess? Like, I can't look at these pictures, right? Nope. Oh, there's a lot of notes there. Oh, is that open now? Oh, it is. Is that a medallion? Oh, no, it's a candle. Just from a weird angle. No, no, no. What's with this room? It's covered in blood and rust. This is my room. But what the hell has happened to it? This room, is it really my room? Wait. It's in terrible shape. The air is so heavy my head hurts. Creepy, it looks like a face. What the hell am I writing? August 2nd, Joseph. What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't know if you recognize those words, but I do. Those were things that we said. Mostly near the beginning of the game, I think, but also just throughout it. Yeah, and Joseph said, what the hell am I writing? Like it was just flowing into them. Do they see into the f future? Am I real? 
Now I'm thinking, ooh, hmm. Now I'm thinking of something else. Remember when we were in, I don't remember what the hell their, their name was, but we were in the painter's apartment, the one that uh, was Rachel's real lover, and they, they painted everybody, um, everybody's portrait in the entire apartment complex and mentioned like who they were and and all that. Or maybe, was that Rachel's place? No, I think it was just a painter separate from Rachel, right? Well, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, there was portraits of basically all the tenants and like little blurbs talking about what their personalities were like and whatnot. I noticed this, but I forgot to note it at the time. Notice that we weren't there. We weren't painted. There was one canvas that said it hasn't been drawn yet. Which I'm guessing was to be ours. Between this here and the fact that it hasn't been drawn yet when it comes to us. That makes me think that we're not a real person. Like we're a manifestation of the journalist maybe? Like the journalist wrote us, made us? It makes some sense. Because, I mean, manifesting your own thoughts into physical things accidentally or on purpose is definitely nothing new to Silent Hill. Like the town and, and the cult and all the otherworldly things that happen. That seems to happen quite a lot. A lot of feelings, a lot of internal feelings and, and hurts and all sorts of things made external by, I don't know, demons or something. It's so either that or they just were seeing the future and like switched to a different version of this room in the future, just like we've now switched to the past, right? Could be. I can't break down the wall. August 3rd, Joseph. When the bell rings, Eileen equals mother's body blood. The bell. The crimson tome. Bury part of the conjurer's mother's flesh within the true body of the con conjurer's. Uh, part of the flesh equals super's room. Oh, yeah, the umbilical cord. That I already figured out. But thank you, Joseph. Oh, that's interesting. The journalist's, uh, Joseph's typewriter, also has color, like everything else that I can interact with, but I can't interact with it. Hmm. gate to hell. Why must I destroy this wall? Oh, this is the wall they're trying to destroy. The gate to hell. Am I supposed to finish the job somehow? I have a pickaxe. What? What's happening? Sacraments, the 
only way to purify her. He then performed the ceremony of the Holy Assumption and created this twisted world. Now, he's become nothing more than an inhuman killing machine. Well, he's dead now, but he's still trying to complete the 21 sacraments. His boyhood desire to return to the bosom of his birth has divided him. Now his child self has manifested itself in this world. And soon he's planning to finish his work, the 21 sacraments. Number 20, the mother reborn, Eileen Galvin. Number 21, the receiver of wisdom, Henry Townsend. Even now, it may not be too late. Follow the crimson tone. Stop disappearing. If not, wherever the world he will catch you. Find him. His true location. It must be nearby. You must kill him. You must kill him. Kill. Kill. this puddle where they came through the ceiling? I think so. I think that was Joseph, the journalist who used to live here. I feel like it was. There's quite a bit to talk about there. Uh, okay, first thing. You did well to make it so far. That makes me think even more yet again that I was created by Joseph. That sounded like them being happy that their creation had made it further than they thought it would. Also, that cutscene was sort of really bad, but part of it actually kind of grew on me by the end. The part that I didn't like at first but kind of liked at the end was the voice acting. It sounded just incredibly dead and emotionless and kind of awkward. But then as it went on, I realized it actually started to sound more otherworldly. It is dead, emotionless, and kind of awkward, but I don't know if it's because it's just not voice acted well. It actually... It feels like it was just a message being communicated from a whole other world. They were just popping their head in. You know, just like the ghosts come through the walls and whatnot, and all sorts of things come through the walls. It's like somehow they had found a way to pop their head in, but you know, trying to communicate between different times, between different worlds, in a place like this, it's like the signal just gets distorted before it gets to the other end, you know? So that part kind of grew on me, actually. 
The other part that I still don't like, though, is... Wow, what a huge just lore dump. And the thing is, like 95% of that lore, I've already figured out. It just felt very awkward. It's like, you don't... Game, you don't need to explain everything. Especially not when you've explained it in little bits and pieces all over the world that I've found. I guess that'd be super helpful if you hadn't paid attention to the notes and stuff, but... I, it just feels like way too much, like it's trying to explain itself too much. It's okay to let the stuff just breathe. And what is that axe? Is that another pickaxe of despair? Take the pickaxe. Oh my god, it's a pickaxe of hope! Hope is written on the handle. Doesn't look like I can use it as a weapon. Oh. Weirdly enough, I can't use it here. I guess it's what was being used to try to get through the wall. Hmm. Maybe I'm going to end up using that to, uh, like, open a cavity within the Conjurer, a.k.a. Walter Sullivan's real body, to put the umbilical cord in. Yeah, Walter Sullivan, you like to take out people's hearts and sew them back up. Well, how about I open you up and put an umbilical cord in and don't sew you back up, fucker. What happens if I go out here? Is it just back to the world as it was before? Or are we stuck in the other world? Okay, just back to the world as it was before. So, I guess I gotta go through the hole. I don't know where that's gonna take me, but hopefully to this apartment complex, because I need the umbilical cord. is really never going to be open. It sounds like this hole just collapsed in on itself, though. Wait, no? What was that sound, then? Oh, wait a sec. That's new. He used this place as the locus for the creation of his world. I'm certain he must have performed the ritual of the Holy Assumption near here. But I'm, I'm just not strong enough to stop him anymore. He locked me up in this room and played with me just like a toy. My eyes are starting to go blind. The pain. I can feel my body starting to die. But things are taken care of. Whoever lives here after me. You'll be the 21st, the last of the sacrifices. I leave it up to you. When the bell tolls, the ritual begins. Eileen equals mother's body, blood. Part of the mother's... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. This is not good. Eileen equals mother's body, blood. Oh, never mind. Oh, for a second, I got some wires crossed, and I uh, I forgot that I need to put the piece of the mother in the conjurer, not the mother's body. For a second, I thought I maybe needed to kill Eileen and use their body, but no. Um, Yeah, Flesh is in the Super's room. This is all that I've been able to figure out. I hope this letter gets to you in time. Joseph Schreiber. Yeah, it's interesting how they say it's been... Like, they can feel themselves dying, but it's been taken care of. Things have been taken care of. Leads even more credence to the idea that I've been created somehow. Some more papers and stuff here, but can't read them. Yeah, so what was that noise? Oh, 
It's kind of like something crumbling. Say, have we gotten anything new in our fridge? Nope. Still checks out. Haven't been able to leave to the store. <laughs> I don't suppose I can open this back up. No. I'm guessing we need to use the pickaxe of hope. Here. I guess they were too weak. Yeah, they said that they were dying and they were weak. They don't have the strength to do anything about it. I guess that's why they couldn't get through the wall, but we can. So, which way do I go, then? Through the wall, or through the other hole in the laundry room? Let's follow the pickaxe of hope first. Yeah. 